What's going on everyone? Scott here. Welcome back to the channel. Michigan State football has added seven transfers since we last did an update not too long ago. So let's just jump right in and go over the new additions to the Michigan State football program as we head into the summer months and high school recruiting picks up this weekend, in fact. But first, if you would, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and drop a like if you do indeed like this video. First, we got Nakai Martinez going into his junior year as a defensive back transfer from UCF. Primarily will play the safety position, presumably. Uh, we don't know that yet, obviously, but he had three interceptions last year, 54 tackles, and has quite, played quite a bit in his first two years down there in Central Florida, appearing in all 14 games as a freshman and starting all 13 in his sophomore year. Uh, look, more depth in the defensive backfield is going to be the theme here. It definitely needed with the departure of Jaden Mangum and kind of the depth at the position already. Obviously, you had guys like Caleb Cooley, uh, Charles Brantley, but a position group for Michigan State that has struggled the last about four-ish years. So adding all the depth possible to this position to try to mix and match the best group to throw out there every Saturday. I'm assuming Martinez uh, will compete for that two deep. As of right now, it seems like Malik Spencer and Dylan Tatum will be that starting safety duo, but I assume that Martinez will see a lot of run at safety this fall. Also, adding legend... Cavazos, defensive back from North Carolina with one year of eligibility left remaining. Unless he gets a medical redshirt for last year, he only appeared in one game, but presumably one year of eligibility remaining as of right now. Uh, started three games as a sophomore appearing in 11. Six foot, 200 pound defensive back, adding some more depth to that room. As we said, this was the theme. You just need more bodies in there to help raise the floor and ho hopefully maybe raise the ceiling of the group as well. Next up, defensive line in the Derek Harmon trade with Oregon is complete, adding big worm Ben Roberts, a 6'2", 310-pound junior defensive lineman from Oregon, played in nine total games in his first two years, um, and adding some much-needed depth to the defensive line room that saw its two best defensive tackles hit the portal this offseason. We already mentioned Derek Harmon, but also Simeon Barrow. I'd imagine big worm will slide into that too deep immediately. Um, important to note that he did spend the last two years with new uh, Michigan State defensive back coach Demetrius Martin there in Eugene. Obviously, different position group, but still in that defensive room. Now, circling back to the defensive back room with cornerback out of Baton Rouge and the LSU Tigers, Jeremiah Hughes coming in with three years of eligibility left after playing in all 13 games as a true freshman. Uh, primarily, I believe, on special teams. Six foot, 193 pound defensive back from Las Vegas. Originally, again, another guy to compete for one of those two deep spots. I mean, an underclassman as well that could be around the program for a couple years here. I mean, I think that's that's big with this addition here. You know, getting someone who can be in the system, learn from some of the guys who have some more playing experience in the room, um, and a guy that can be around uh, the program for a couple years here. Back on the defensive line with Old Dominion transfer, Jalen Satchel, going into his redshirt junior year, has played in 27 games in his career, has a handful of tackles for losses. Again, as we said with Ben Roberts, Adding depth to that thin, inexperienced defensive line room is huge. A guy that has played quite a bit of games in his career, albeit at a lower level for sure, but adding someone that can compete in that too deep defensive line room right now is big. 6'1", 300 pounds, we'll definitely take that. Now the last two additions, we will go to the linebacker room. First, Marcellius Pullman. Hope I didn't butcher that last name. Linebacker from Miami down there in South Florida, appeared in 10 games as a true freshman last year, mainly on special teams, had one interception. This is an ad that could definitely pay off, and you could see the fruits of this labor in the future, right? Because this linebacker room is pretty experienced this year with upperclassmen such as Darius Snow, Cal Halliday, uh, Jordan Turner, and Wayne Matthews. So they're really only underclassmen, likely seeing a lot of spin in that linebacker room is Jordan Hall, who obviously was a starter last year, will be a no-doubt starter this year, obviously one of the captains and leaders of this group, not just on the linebacker room or the defensive side, but this whole team and this whole program. But this could be a down-the-line play, learn from some of these guys and, you know, pick up on some of their traits and tendencies, learn the defense, and, you know, a lot of those upperclassmen either be graduating this year or next year, you know, you could see your spot definitely within the two deep as early as next year. Now this last ad that uh, for sure didn't have either side of the Michigan State and Michigan rivalry riled up last week, last weekend, um, especially with the Jaden Mangum news uh, pretty much happening hand in hand with this. Uh, that would be Samaj Bridgman, linebacker from, you guessed it, that school down the road there in Ann Arbor. 
6'2", 246 linebacker, was a four-star linebacker from Philly. Looks like a good young piece to have in that room for the future. He didn't get any spin last year at all. Didn't see any time. But, you know, obviously, four-star kid, you know, looks like a nice piece to have in that room going forward to add some, as we said, with Marcellius Pullman, too, just adding some more young guys to that room for the future once some of these upperclassmen graduate here within the next two years. But now, as we kind of talked about this, talking about the rivalry transfer, right? Michigan State to Michigan or vice versa. Talked about it in the Jaden Mangan video a couple weeks ago now, posing the question, would he go there? Well, spoiler alert, yes, he did. But I would like to just add, again, transferring as an all-Big Ten honorable mention, like Jaden Mangum was, and a freshman buried on the depth chart that didn't see any time last year, and from people's opinions over there, it seemed like wasn't going to see a lot of time this year either. Different stories here, but don't tell the fans down in Ann Arbor that. Uh, look, as I said before, I know I'm kind of sorry to steal any thunder, thunder from the Samaj Bridgman commitment here to Michigan State. Happy to have him in the green and white. Uh, excited to see what he can do in his career. I uh, don't want this uh, Jaden Mangum talk to get hijacked by that, but uh, wish Jaden all the best. Hope he has a wonderful career. Um, obviously, hope they don't win any games. Would love to see them lose every game, but by all accounts, he's a good kid. You know, the whole situation with his brother getting pushed on the depth chart uh, seems like was the main reason for him uh, seeking other routes in the transfer portal, but it does seem like there was some message for chatter that brother's scholarship wasn't taken away despite what the third brother said that they took the scholarship away that's why they both entered the portal that seems to not be the case uh but we're looking forward to as i said getting samaj in the green and white so we'll close the book on that here and that'll recap a wild couple of weeks since we updated two trades if you will with oregon and one with the most unlikely school in michigan a bunch of solid depth added here and jonathan smith has completely flipped the roster here in the first six months here in East Lansing. Now, is this roster going to be going to Indy this fall? No. But this group could be one that helps set the standard for Jonathan Smith and company here in East Lansing going forward and bring some fun times back to East Lansing. That's what we're looking for. These last four years have been a grind. 2021 was fantastic. Um, the last two years, not a lot of fun was that. Me personally, I'm still sitting at floor of four wins, ceiling Eight, nine wins. I lean more eight, but could nine happen? Possibly. Right now, I'm still sitting at seven and five. I know that's, you know, kind of right middle of the pack, leaning right over above 500 there. But listen, you go six and two in the eight winnable games. The first four and the last four are winnable games or gettable games, I guess. Uh, whatever word you want to use for those. They're gettable games on paper. You go 6-2 and two in those at worst. Obviously, you'd like to go 8-0 or 7-1 and one in those games. But right now, I'm saying 6-2 and two in those games. And then you steal one of those four in the middle that you'll be underdogs for. More than likely, the only two, by all means, not predicting this at all. The only two of those middle games, you know, possibly Iowa at home or possibly Michigan, just because it's the rivalry game. In those four games in the middle, just be competitive. Just please don't. By halftime, it'd be 42 to nothing or 42 to 7, whatever, 35 to 7. Just compete in those games. That's what we want to see this year. Go 6 and 6, 7 and 5. That's where I'm at right now, 7 and 5. If you can go 7 and 1 in those games, you're in those eight games you're supposed to win and, you know, steal one of those four games that you will not be favored in, hey, you're looking at eight wins possibly. So um, I can see the path there, but I think just set, setting the standard going forward in year one here under Jonathan Smith is what we're looking for. But, so that's where we sit right now. We'll obviously talk about this team throughout the summer, probably going through each position group as well, talking uh, more about if we get any high school commits, obviously with official visits starting this weekend, and talking more about the schedule as a whole this upcoming year. But anyway, thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out and go green.